Matt Dubs, welcome to the Underground Society podcast. I'm super excited. What age did you actually start producing? Because I know you're pretty young still. Yeah, so I'm 19 at the moment. I got FL, I think I was 9 or 10. I was playing with Legos at 9 or 10. I had, <laughs> I had no idea I wanted to do music at that age. That's insane. A lot of people know you from your song, Pop It. I don't even know what that means. Pop It actually means boobies. If you look at the art, it's got like the little logo is like a little like... <laughs> Boobies. If it's nice, play it twice. That you brought up Rampage a few times. What was that experience like playing for Rampage? That was actually my first time ever using CDJs. What the <laughs> hell? Being so young, what has been the biggest challenge for you? 18 year old alone in Paris, the worst thing ever. Walked for about two minutes and I got approached maybe 10 times by crackheads and homeless people. I also know that you've been to Lost Lines. You went last year, right? I think I traveled for 18 hours in total. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's one thing going. But then it's also another thing, having all access, like... Matt Dubs, welcome to the Underground Society podcast. I'm super excited. So you're from the UK, and I'm always curious about kind of the different the different come-ups when people are from different countries. So can you kind of just give me a rundown of how you got introduced into music and kind of how, obviously, you're becoming a, a very successful project, but how did how did the early phases look like for you? Yeah, so originally how it all really started uh, is back when I was maybe like 10, I went to my friend's house to play Minecraft and his older brother was like blasting music on his uh, laptop. And I was like, what is this? This is awesome. And turns out it was actually, uh, it was a uh, Skrillex. It was one of the old, I, don't, I think it was Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, but it was like, okay, I need to listen to this. So then I went home that day and I went to my dad. I was like, dad, dad, please let me, let me buy this. Let me buy this like EP off iTunes. And then from there, it just went on. Uh, so I like listened to like a bunch of stuff. I remember, I think the first song I actually uh, bought myself was, it was, it was a Grabbit song. It was Grabbit's Handle Yourself, I think. And that was okay. like 2012. Uh, I love Grabbit. Yeah, yeah. I used to listen to him so much. So yeah, so when I was at that point, I was listening to it a lot, but I didn't really think about going beyond. And then when I was, so originally I... Uh, used to play a game called Destiny and I had quite a few friends on there, quite a lot of friends on there. And one of the guys that I knew was actually like a, a YouTuber, but he wasn't very big. He was sort of just like everyone else, like a few hundred subscribers. I remember one of the videos uh, he posted actually had a virtual riot song. And I already heard this song before, but I had no clue what it was. So I was like, dude, 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 what is this song? I need to know this song. And then when I found the song, it was a binge fest. It was it, the amount of music I listened to on that night. It was crazy. So after that, that's when I listened to Virtual Art and found him out and found like a new whole side of dubstep that I didn't really know before. Like, I mean, there were like a few melodic bits, but Virtual Art was where I properly like discovered the melodic stuff. And when I went away on holiday to, to like pass time when I was like, uh, not doing anything, I would watch. There was specifically, it was the Virtual Riot making of Luna stream. Now, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this know that video, and probably all the producers watched that as well, and that was where they started, because I know a lot of people that's where they started. At, like uh, Phonon, for example, also Phenomenal got involved in, in. I know the, you have a collab with him too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a, a lot of stuff. He also pretty much started because of that stream. And it's, it's so funny to think about because I, I genuinely have watched that stream all the way through without pausing like 15 times and I enjoyed it every single time. So when I got home from that holiday, I was like, dad, 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 I need to like, I, I want to do this. So this was, I think I was 12 here. I think I was 12. I was like, dad, can I please buy? So I, I bought FL Studio Lite. And this is the one where you have like no, uh, there's so many restrictions on what you can actually do. So it was pretty bad. Like I couldn't even use audio for some reason when you, uh, when you buy that one, it's like a hundred dollars, but you can't even use audio. What it's really heck? weird. <laughs> so like I, I learned on there initially and that was brilliant. Uh, well, I mean, it sucked. I was awful, but I had such a, I had such a great time. So then from there now is where I like tried to like meet new people. So this is where. After a few years, when I then got Ableton, because I realized FL was a bit, and <laughs> so, many, so many people are going to hate me for this saying this, but I mean, after like I saw Virtual Riot do the switch from Cubase, 
I was like, okay, I I, I want to try this as well. And I got Ableton. And then from there, I like, uh, I went on Discord and I tried to meet as many people as I could. And actually, in terms of like being in the UK and knowing people here, I got myself more involved with the online space than I did anyone around me. Like, That's what I thought. I was going to yeah. ask you if you got, you know, building your relationships and stuff and building your network, if that was, you know, mainly online because you are obviously from the UK. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I wish I was the, one of those people that, because I know that in the UK, uh, quite a few guys that have like known each other that they knew in person before. I wish it was like mm-hmm. that, but it's not really, I'm not really too fussed. I mean, a, a fun fact, actually, uh, Nimda went to my school. He went to my school and he was four years above me. So by chance, we basically like, I want to say had the same childhood, but by chance, I didn't know until after we both left that he was there. I mean, he was like four years older than me, so it wouldn't have really mattered, but he was literally, I could have known him before knowing anyone online by chance. I mean, it was pretty funny actually, because my teacher, uh, my music teacher actually told me about him once when I didn't even know him. And it's funny to look back on it because it was like, oh, I was this close from <laughs> this close from knowing him all these years ago. Um, uh, I wanted to go back to you talking about the, watching the virtual riot streams and stuff. What do you think about like that stream really got you like interested in like, OK, I have to start making this like I have to get myself involved. Yeah, I think a big part of it was like the whole process of making your own creation Mm. like having something there that you can in the end listen to and enjoy that whole idea was like so awesome to me i was like gosh i could i could make something and listen to it and it could be cool i mean it wasn't cool for like five years the the amount of time i've like spent actually producing to get to a point where i've actually liked my stuff has been ages but honestly the amount of satisfaction i even found just watching someone else do it it was awesome i mean yeah, it, it's the same as like, I guess, like drawing or something like that. Uh, you see someone doing it, you're like, yeah. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's, it's brilliant. You were just talking about how, you, how you've been producing for a long time. What age did you actually start producing? Because I know you're pretty young still. <laughs> yeah, so I'm 19 at the moment. And yeah, so I think I got FL, I think I was 12. But I did use GarageBand before. I did try to make like Skrillex type beats, but they were like, <laughs> A 10 year old using GarageBand, you can expect exactly what that sounded like. It was uh, not very good. So in terms of like serious producing or like actually producing with proper equipment, then I guess we would say like seven years, but actually trying to use sounds, I want to say more like nine or 10. Dude, that's freaking wild. I was playing with Legos at nine or 10. I had had no (laughs) idea I wanted to do music at that age. That's insane. Are you from a family of musicians or how did you get Um, into the, why, why did that happen for you at such a young age? Do you think? See, I have quite a a creative family, but in different areas. So my dad's an architect. My sister is like a drawing artist. My mom was in clothes design. So we're all in like the, the artistic sort of area. But I guess the main thing that really started all of it or like me properly enjoying music was my dad putting me onto like gorillas and acdc they were like the two main guys that i used to listen to back when i was like probably yeah i want to say like seven like goated albums would be gorillas and demon gorillas demon days and acdc back in black they're absolute ah uh, dude pristine yes. Yes. and yeah it's, it's especially being from the uk because- acdc especially being from the uk that's your bread and butter really <laughs> that's where they're from yeah. so yeah it's awesome <laughs> The same with the uh, gorillas. I've actually seen them live, which was awesome. I don't, okay, uh, I don't know too much about gorillas, but oh, they're they're so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, did, think, wait, do you listen to house music? Not too not so much. much. I think Dumb Dollar just released a song like a remix of the gorillas. I think, if, I, oh, if wow. I'm not mistaken. But wait, that's, anyways, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the whole me listening to ACDC thing, I think, was also a big reason why I actually enjoyed Skrillex. I think getting getting into dubstep as uh, as someone who listens to like really soft music, I don't think is going to work much. No, <laughs> uh, especially at a young age. I think listening to loads of like hectic loud stuff was definitely the move. Otherwise, it, I probably it, wouldn't have been a dubstep producer if for it wasn't real. for or, ACDC. So. Or or rhythm, really. I mean, even yeah, a step further than that. Yeah. Before we get into kind of the mus- the musical side of your project, I did want to ask because I noticed in your Instagram bio that you had Insulin Gang. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so insulin 
is actually uh, so it's something it's something your body produces, and essentially I don't have it. And the reason why I don't have it is because I'm diabetic. It's sort of just like a mini like reference to like my diabetes. I try not to be like too. I don't want to like make my whole brand about it, but I kind of wanted to sneak that in as like a little like fun little thing because I try to be fun with it because something like diabetes honestly sucks, but trying to like make the best out of it is I think all you can really do. And that's the sort of idea I'm doing. And I actually get other people that like message me the same thing and they give me like their, their experiences and insight with diabetes, which is like a pretty cool thing. Hopefully we get more of those like a group in the scene, but I don't think diabetes is that common that uh, a group of producers with it will ever come around. Probably not, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that, I mean, a lot of times people either have diabetes or they have some form of, you know, I don't even know what you would call that. Uh, like lack of something and they use it as they, they use it as an excuse or as, an, as a detriment and you mm. haven't done that at all and you've actually incorporated it into something and made it you know just showcase like hey this is a part of me and i'm not going to let that stop me so i think that's awesome that yeah. you, you actually took that angle on it do you wear uh, a pump yeah i've got a, a little boy right here this thing was annoying to get i actually so when I got diabetes, this was like after I started producing, which is pretty funny. Um, mm. Oh, after you started it, producing when you yeah, got it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got it. I got it when I was like 14. Interesting. Um, but yeah, it, so the, what, the is it type one or two? Uh, yeah, it's type one. Yeah, I'm not okay, like yeah. a big eater. That's I what I was like. like, <laughs> I have like a, an empty pack of cookies here, but <laughs> we're going to ignore that. I went gym, so I was like super hungry. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. How, how, what is, as a, you know, how having insulin and you, you know, the fact that you are a producer and stuff, does that in any way, have you struggled in any way because of the fact, does it have any like detriment towards you producing music? Not at all, to be honest. Uh, it, it barely like gets in the way of my life, especially with this thing. It, I sometimes I forget completely that I even have it, which is amazing. I feel so like privileged to be at a point where I don't have to even like really think about it half the time. It's awesome. I think that, you know, with, especially as you as your project continues to grow and stuff and you're traveling more and whatnot i feel like you know being on the road is, isn't always the easiest thing with eating and stuff do you have to have like you have to be on like a specific diet or a... so with eating it's pretty much the same but i do carry uh these around dextro energy so essentially when my sugar levels are too low i have to just munch away at these yeah but to be honest it's not too bad the only thing i do fear is the the whole going to america and having to pay for insulin thing that is like because I I believe I can only have three months of insulin. So I'll basically have three months to do whatever I want to do. Oh, and then I have, to I have to go back. Get out and get more. Damn. And then I guess fly back, but Yeah, that might that might be rough in the future, but as of right yeah, now, it's I probably haven't had to deal with that too much. All right. Well, I want to get into the music stuff. Obviously, a lot of people know you from your song Pope. And I, I just can't the fact that you had a song do that well at such a young age is incredible. So I just want to hear the story behind that song. I love that song. It's been in our playlist. People that I, I, you know, rhythm DJs that live near me and I'm friends with played in their sets. And it's such like a big song now. It's quite funny, actually, because the the song itself was a pretty like like it was pretty instant. It was a pretty swift job. Uh, I mean, Aut Automate's an excellent producer. He can do a lot with like little time. Like I think I think the drop and the intro, the very first versions we made in one night, which is pretty funny, but we spent a lot of time like going over it. But in terms of like the whole come up of the song, Automate is actually someone that I've known for quite a long time now. Yeah. Uh, you guys are on the team, management team's the same, right? Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Me and him have been friends for, I want to say five years now, five-ish years. And this whole time we haven't like made anything. So we did want to make sure this song was going to be like the club anthem kind of thing. And I'm glad it, it's been received that way. Uh, I mean, seeing like Infect play that song and the amount of times it got played at EZC last week, it's, it's, I, I don't even know what to Where like, people just send new videos kind of and thing. stuff? It's nuts. Like I genuinely think last weekend, I want to say like in total, like a hundred thousand ears heard that song. If you if you put all Stay. the artists together, yeah, yeah, even yeah, from being the same people, just that that many per like of each set, because like I think I think the bass pod stage what is like twenty k people, twenty, yeah, I would say twenty, yeah, yeah, and I know it got played in uh, 
like a couple every day and that's just like that is, that's sick it's so so strange <laughs> to me but i'm really glad that the song uh the guy that i did it with is someone that i'm so close with and have great fun uh being with i was with him uh last week actually, it'll be cool was, to like play that song live especially if you guys are in the same area or whatever and like be able to like yeah well, I, I was with him i was with him last week and we went to boots house i don't know if you know what that oh, is oh yeah did yeah. I think uh, Heckler just played that show too. Or yeah, Bat- yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was there at that show, and okay. he brought me on, and we like opened with it. We wheeled nice. it back, bloody da, made sure yes. we like, milked it and everything, and it was awesome <laughs> because you like you can. If it's a nice play it twice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you could hear like from the crowd, everyone like knew the song already, and you can hear like Bobby. Like yes. so many of the videos I've seen, people know the pre-drop, and it's really it's. It's so like hard to take in and I cannot like express enough to like everyone that uh, oh, cool. listens to it and feels that way. I just, I can't express how like thankful I am and well, how grateful did, I am because it's. Where did that sample come from? What is Poppy? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're going to find this very funny. Poppy actually means boobies. Oh, nice. <laughs> and the idea of the cover up with the milk. If you actually uh, look at the art, if you look at the art, it says Pope, uh, like Pope milk. Mm-hmm. And it's got like the little logo is like a little like. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's, it's so funny. But uh, <laughs> the, the pre drop is so it's actually Italian. And Automate told me about it at Rampage last year. And I was like, dude, we've got to make a song using this word because it is hilarious. And it sounds so stupid, but it's so, it's not like catchy as well, just pop it. But the pre drop is actually me. I was going to say, who with vocals, who actually said it? it yeah, and so for both drops, that was me. And then the outro, where there's like all the Italian... I mean, I can't speak Italian. I yeah. can only say <laughs> proper. All the Italian stuff is like uh, automated send that. Nice. Is he Italian? Yes, yes. Okay, That's, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty funny because uh, he's been telling me all his uh, Italian friends have like just been like spamming him with like Pope, Pope, Pope. Yeah. <laughs> so so since that funny. song, obviously, you know, we've seen even... Not only that song, you know, go big recently, but, you know, Laser Beam, just there's a ton of examples of songs exploding like that. What does that do for your artist project? How much did that aid you in like the growth of your project? Did you really see a big incline or did it kind of, was it just a song or did it kind of, did it link enough back to you to where you grew a bigger fan base or how did that kind of work out? Yeah. So my, my fan base definitely grew a lot after that song. I noticed like my, my like reach on my socials, like Instagram has been going crazy recently which has been awesome my spotify has sort of like I, i've had like a bigger audience but uh my in terms of like, like my my monthly my monthly's uh been chilling at like a certain point because the the remix i dropped with a uh, sora beast boy and mm-hmm. ultimate that went crazy on spotify so my my listeners is sort of like stayed level but it's nice because it hasn't like dropped low but yeah, in terms of say, like good in, to follow it up like, with that yeah. though <laughs> yeah in terms of like actual in person interactions though it's been like a, a big thing for me like uh when i was at rampage in uh it was like late feb early march i think it was funny because i actually brought my school friends there one of them one of them understands the scene the other one doesn't uh i know one of them's probably gonna watch this so hello if you're here <laughs> uh, but we we went there and when we like got into the actual club i got approached i think like three times in the first minute by people saying, please play Pope tonight. And I looked at my friends and I was like, have I, have I made it? <laughs> yeah, have I made it? <laughs> it, was, it was so funny, but like every time I go to a show, I, I get people saying about uh, either just like me as an artist or about that song. Uh, and it's awesome. Uh, I'm glad like people recognize me as well. That was one thing that I like a lot. And I noticed not so much was happening like that last year, like uh, at Rampage, it was funny because I was with a, uh, Hugh K and he's like the most recognizable guy ever but everyone would like go up to him and go Hugh K Hugh K and I, ju- I just sort of like stand there but now I guess people like know what I, I actually like. come up I- to you yeah yeah I mean it sounds a bit ego I don't know <laughs> no it's cool yeah it's a part of the journey and it's, it's a cool time to experience when you know when you find you have something that's working and people are actually starting to recognize you from it. I mean, it's just success. It's, I don't think it's, it's, it's egotistical at all. I think that's awesome. So I also just, I, I have the business mind that I have. I was interested in uh, the merch line that you guys did for it. Cause I know you, you, you kind of like, you trademarked it and you did a bunch of, you kind of went above and beyond with, with the merch with it. What, 
what was kind of the game plan there with that? So the idea of that was sort of like, because Pope is a special song for both of us, we wanted to just do like a, a short special thing. Uh, I mean, it was my first merch ever, so I wanted to make sure this was like a special nice little thing. So it was like a collaboration done with a, a group who do collab, uh, I mean, who do merch. And this was actually the first artist collab that they did. And the whole process of it uh, was really nice, but we wanted to make sure that we were like, giving back to the people as well. I mean, sure you had to buy it, blah, blah, but we like gave away a song as well and everything because we really wanted to make sure that um, we were like really giving our all and making sure this was like, yeah, making sure this was like a cool, nice thing. I mean, now I'm really excited uh, for open air. Hopefully I'll see some people that have the merch on. That'd be awesome. If you're going, I hope I see that. But yeah, I mean, I'm super excited to have it myself. To to think I'm like going to have my own merch to wear is like really weird. And I'm glad I didn't like rush the process because it was honestly, it, it felt really, really awesome. Uh, especially actually seeing people get the merch. Like it would have been funny if it was just like one person bought it and then that was the whole thing. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, people actually, but it was, it was a successful song. So uh, it, to pair it with something that actually, you know, did do some good numbers was, I think was a great idea. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you also did like a limited amount of those. What was kind uh, of- the... So we did a limited time thing instead of a limited amount. So people were well, able we to put in their it, orders yeah. and then you were able to take those orders and make it off, off the quantity that you guys received. Yeah, yeah. So I think we did it as like a five day thing. It was sort of like, the the release day to like five days after was like the sort of uh, sort of time we had. We didn't want to make it too long where it just seemed like we were kind of like trying to milk it. Um, but we didn't want to make it too short where people missed out. So we we tried to give as much time as possible where it was actually like a limited thing. What was the song that you said you gave away a song with it as well? How did that? So we actually made a song uh, during like the the release part. It wasn't like. A crazy song but it was like something we just wanted to give away for fun also edo was like in a in a busy situation because he was on that keizo tour and he was in a bus with really bad internet and we were like on the complete other sides of the earth so it was like a bit very rough yeah <laughs> yeah it, it was a bit of an awkward situation um yeah but it worked out Awesome. You've brought up Rampage a few times and obviously that's like a big festival that most people want to go to it's it's I would say the biggest bass music festival in the world, and you've had the opportunity to play for them. What, what was that experience like playing for Rampage, and when did that kind of, when did that first happen? How many times you've played a couple times, right? I've played twice now. The first time was pretty funny actually, but so the first time was uh, Open Air, which is like the summer festival one, and this was funny because I played as a replacement. Well, me and Kana played as a replacement for Chime because his wife got COVID, so he didn't go, and I found out the morning before. And I think I had to go and buy a USB and get all the tunes sorted on Canna's PC, which is really funny. And it was also, <laughs> like, but I was excited. I mean, I, I'd, I'd heard about the news and I wasn't really nervous or anything like even playing. I was just like, go for yeah. it. Yeah. And it was pretty funny though, because, uh, this sounds really crazy and anyone that sees this is probably going to mention it, but that was actually my first time ever using CDJs. What the hell? <laughs> that, like what? A thousand people. That was my first ever show, first time ever using CDJs, and I was playing Rampage. Yeah, that's uh, insane. I, the was, fact that the, and the fact that you weren't nervous is a feat in itself. Because if that was anyone's first show, it you know you would imagine, of course, yeah. they're nervous. But why, why do you think that you weren't nervous and really just more excited? Or was yeah, it just so, a natural reaction? <laughs> I, I try to say this to anyone that's sort of like nervous for a show, but when you really think about what a show is, it's just a bunch of people that want to have fun whilst listening to a few songs. They're not going to like, okay, maybe some people will, but most people aren't going to care if your your song was filtered a bit wrong on the transition or this or that. The only people that are going to care about that are the people who are actually in the industry and the people who are actually producing the music and even yeah. then they probably won't give a shit <laughs> yeah like the, the only thing i would really be nervous for i guess would be like maybe like promoters watching and going oh this guy's mixing's bad or like there's no hype here i'm not gonna book him uh, this kind of thing but apart from that i'm there to have fun the people are there to have fun i have trust in the songs i choose so i'm just like What's the point in being nervous? Like genuinely, what is the point? And especially when you play the first song, all the nervousness sort of just like disappears. 
and it's just like an hour of just having fun. I try not to like think about it in a way where it's like why you should be nervous. I mean, some people it makes sense. Some people have like a nervous sort of like a. I'm trying to think the right word. I don't want to say like illness or condition. Yeah, but like yeah. just like normal anxiety, which makes right. sense. For yeah, sure. I mean, it completely makes sense. I'm just quite like a. How do I say it? Not like a brave person, but I, I try to not like look at the little things in terms yeah. of uh, like the negatives of stuff. Well, that works. I'm glad you're like that because it works out, especially being so young and in, in the game, you know, in the music game. Like the fact, that I, I'm sure it helps the fact that you're you're able to be so confident about what you're doing and you're able to just go out there and have fun. Because, like you said, very very correct about that. You, the people are just there to have fun. You're there to have fun. But at a young age, I would, I would imagine that it's a lot, you know, a lot going on around you. And that, when I was, I'm 25 now, but thinking, you know, six six years ago, even seven years ago, and you know imagining if that was me like no way dude <laughs> that's awesome that you've been able to accomplish that being the fact that you know that you do have that strength within you and stuff what would you say was has been like the challenge the most challenging part of your journey you know being from a different country mm. being so young being you know there's not a lot of people that are that are in in your position so what has been the biggest challenge for you firstly getting my name out there to start with as an artist uh like actually going on SoundCloud and doing all that stuff. And the second thing that was probably a challenge as well was going to Paris alone. That was going to Paris alone. That was a show I played last year in Paris. 18 year old alone in Paris, not the move. <laughs> I mean, it was all right after I, after I got to like the first place I was staying at, it was fine. But like a short little thing that happened, I had my like suitcase and everything with me. And I had to like take the underground and it turns out there was like an indoor entrance to the tube within the train station. Well, the train station itself is already rated like one star for like theft and like dodgy people. So like being in there was worse enough. But finding out that there was a tube inside, I walked out and the outside, anyone French from Paris specifically that's watching this, outside the Gare de Nord station is the worst thing ever. I, I think I walked for about two minutes and I got pr approached maybe 10 times by crackheads and homeless people. What the hell? Awful. Damn. And I, I was like, just, just my little teenage self. Well, I guess not teenage now, but yeah. 18 it was, still, it's on the cusp. <laughs> yeah, it was... <sighs> That's wild. Yeah. Paris is a weird place, but as soon as like you're with someone... I think it's just being with someone like completely changes the experience because people see someone's alone and they'll just be like, no. I mean, especially Paris, like, uh, it's funny because when I was on the, st when I was, when I was on the train, one of the days, uh, my friend told me, we were like, oh yeah, we, we might not pass through the station. If we do, uh, just be careful. But the train, the train people normally just miss the station because it's like too much effort to deal with sometimes and we actually got off at the station once and i know why now it was it was interesting i think i got off the train and saw like there was like at least like eight homeless people on the on the actual like what's the word the uh, the the actual like oh, i'm trying to think what the side of like the where the train goes to the the platform and it was like eight like eight or nine homeless people and then i like watched people like climb into the bins and pick up like uh, the ends of cigarettes off the floor and stuff like that. A weird place. What, since your traveling and stuff has been that obviously it was a challenging time for you. I also know that you've been to Lost Lines. You went last year, right? Did I you did. go by yourself to that or how did? I did. Okay. Yes. So you're doing a lot of traveling by yourself. That would be challenging. Of course, when I'm there, I'm obviously with people. That's not too bad. I've, I've gotten used to the whole idea. I mean, it's sort of just like crack open the laptop and put my headphones in sort of thing like uh i think it's kind of like relaxing being by yourself especially as you're about to spend well lost lands what is five days especially when you're about to spend like five days with people the whole time i think having that time to yourself i think my flight was i think i traveled for 18 hours in total <laughs> oh god <laughs> well that was, with a, that was with a transfer and the, the time in between and everything but uh, having that time just to myself to just like listen to stuff and just Get excited for it. It was awesome, honestly. I mean, I would like to travel more with someone. I, I like, honestly, being with people more than being alone half the time. Uh, 
because I then don't have this thing to think about. I can just talk to the other person. Um, well, eventually, I mean, I'm sure a TM will come along and you'll you'll be traveling <laughs> with at least a couple of yeah, people. So. Be, <laughs> if, if that happens, that that is going to be such a weird thing. I don't think I'll ever yeah. be able to wrap my head around. But yeah, in terms of Lost Lands itself, it. I've been the last three years, so. <laughs> what can I, love I say? It. It's see, it's one thing going, but then it's also another thing having all access. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, it was it was so weird. Like, uh, me and my friends would be at a stage, and then we'd suddenly go back to the, like the artist area, and I'd just see like sudden death infects <laughs> all just standing there, and I'm just like, what do I do? Like, yeah, I how... sort of just like stood there, and the the thing is, is. Like, Infect knew what I looked like, but, like, Sudden Death didn't know what I looked like. So I had to go, like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mad. But you could tell from my voice, he was like, I know exactly who you are. Um, especially yeah, especially well. Infect. Yeah. Yeah, where's Infect from? He's So he's from Germany, but he lives in Montreal now. Uh, so basically Canadian, I guess. I mean, he's a Canadian citizen. But, yeah, that was, that was a very uh, interesting one. And being able to talk to these people in person, honestly amazing some of the stuff they said about me i still haven't been able to process to this day it, but it's such a weird experience because they all like try to like treat you as well as possible and like i got like a whole experience i wasn't even expecting going i was like okay cool i've got backstage okay but then the artists like gave me like so much care as well i like honestly i love them all the 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 top of the industry although people may think it's a bunch of like sellouts and all that the top guys are actually the nicest people I know. Well, they wouldn't get there if they weren't good pe- people, right? Like eventually, yeah. in my, from what I've experienced, at least in this industry, is like if you're not a good person, you're going to get weeded out real quick, dude. Oh, absolutely. And, and you ha- like- to, to make it that big and to be, you know, to make it that far, you have to be a good. There's no, you don't have an option. So I would imagine that the people at the top of the game are extreme extremely great people i was going to ask you too you kind of answered my question before i even got a chance to ask it but you know because of being young and stuff have, have you experienced any lack of respect from people or has everyone pretty much treated you good all around yeah see to be honest it's been okay i mean in america everyone sees me as like a child which i i hate i hate it i'm an adult but everyone in america will go like oh look at the little kid over there it's the way oh. it's the way our freaking culture is set up man we eat, i even felt the same way i was you know working a job and I, I felt like i was an adult at 18 as well and you know i just recently started feeling like people are actually viewing me as a full yeah. grown adult so yeah i think yeah, it's just so our that's, culture, that's, dude. The, that's the only thing i haven't really had people that are like I mean, I've had like drunk fans, well, not fans, but like people at shows who are drunk and I'll be like disrespectful, but not like, not from the industry, especially not at shows. At shows, everyone's super nice. Uh, whether or not that's actually how they are, I'm not too sure, but <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, the whole being 18, 19 in America, that bit does suck. That bit's not amazing. But in the UK, you can like, I don't know if you do, I but can do you can everything. like drink alcohol. You don't have any restrictions on you. We have to wait till freaking 21 to drink alcohol or buy weed or it's do anything. So, yeah, it's honestly strange because, well, I, I don't want to say I'm like a an alcoholic, but no, over over here, me and the boys, like we have like a good time. Like we can legally have a good time mm-hmm. and then I go over there and I have to wait three years. It's like so I'm dumb. 15 again. Yeah, like, I went to Canada when 15. I was 15. Yeah, I went to Canada. Exactly. It is exactly like you're 18 or 15. I went to Canada when I was 18 and uh, with my parents. And luckily, my parents are cool. So they're like, yeah, if you're legally able to drink here, go for it. <laughs> I was actually yeah. able to experience that before I was 21. But yeah, the whole waiting till 21 thing is so dumb, man. It so makes dumb. no sense. Does it? Because haven't you got like a... How can you have the right to fight for your country, but you can't drink a beer? It doesn't make <laughs> any sense to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would have made sense if they maybe like put like a an aging on like the the amount of alcohol in the drink you have. Like if you have a beer, oh whoop de doo. But if you have like a bottle of vodka, I don't know, or I don't know what police would do over there. But I, it's all really weird because can't you like buy a, like a a gun at eighteen? Yes, that, that too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and you, you can, can also. I mean, driving isn't really the same, but you can drive at well like sixteen. Is it sixteen there? Sixteen. Yeah, see here, yep. it's seventeen. Okay. See, 16's nuts. Yeah, we can That's like, we can get our permit being, at 15. Being able to drive five years before being able to consume a drink is... Yeah. <laughs> like, the fact that... I don't know. I, I feel like driving is, like, a way more uh, serious thing. Well, not serious in that sense, but, like, 
It's life threatening. Yeah, you drink a Dang, beer yeah. as long as you don't get in the car, you're probably going to be safe. Where like if you get in the car and you don't know what the hell you're doing, there's a much bigger life risk there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. I wanted to ask kind of what's next? What what do you, you know, again, being at such a young age, you have so much time in front of you. What what do you want to accomplish in the next like three to five years? Yeah, so there are a few things. Uh, with all the America talk, it's a bit of a hint that obviously I want to get a visa. A visa is a very, very big thing, especially as like 90% of my friends are American. Uh, and also now I have a, a, like a very big fan base from uh, America. I don't know if that was because of Pope, but like, yeah, but like I, I've got quite a few people in America that obviously want to see me and I can't like play shows. Like it's so annoying when I was in LA uh, recently, I had so many people in my stream like, oh my gosh, LA show. And I'm like, nope. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> Unless I play for free. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all so risky. There's so much like even playing for free, it's still a risk. And I don't really know why it's honestly that deep. So playing or uh, getting a visa for America is like, honestly the top priority in terms of my uh like branding side of things i guess getting my name out there also being on a tour would be another thing i'd love like i being on a tour regardless of where that's that honestly it just sounds so cool i'd love to play australia as well i've heard in the past that australia is like amazing for my kind of stuff and i've also heard from australians that my music is one of the the main artist actually in Australia that like gets played all the time. So Crazy. that's going to be like a very exciting yeah. thing when I go over there. But in terms of like the, the releasing side of things, there aren't like specific goals, but sort of, I guess like, uh, put songs out with all my, like my friends, uh, like I've, I've already done like a, a lot with like, uh, my friends, but being able to just like put all of these songs out and they all become like big songs would be mm -hmm. the most, epic thing ever maybe like an album one day i mean Sweet. albums are a weird one it's like a risky yeah. like if you're it's, if you're big enough for it to be especially worth kind of even the big i mean you look at infect like has he releases like eps but he kind of doesn't ever release albums either like no. i, I, I mean, think it's not it, really like the the thing in rhythm cohesively i don't think it would be really challenging to put multiple rhythm tracks into one cohesive piece i don't know how that would work together yeah. <laughs> um, i mean i'd like to try but it would be like yeah. Do I want to put the effort in if I don't see the the outcome, which yeah. is something I'd have to gamble with massively? But uh, yeah. it's a big yeah, risk. I mean, apart enough. from that, it's yeah, a big risk. I think I guess like a a final goal would be like a like a big remix, like something absolutely insane. I don't really do too many remixes, which is I don't know. I want to do more remixes. I actually enjoy doing remixes, but uh, I want to do a lot more. But doing like a really big remix of like. I don't like know, an like official a, remix or something of someone. I'm trying big. to think like a a song that would be insane, like an official. I'm trying to think of like a song that would be absolutely insane. <laughs> what would be like? Hmm. I mean, it would be like an infect anthem song, something like that. Just being able to like do a remix of that that I'm like I'm the only person doing a remix of that would be awesome. I'd love to do something like that. Um. But awesome, yeah, man. man. Do you have anything to tease in the next year, six months to a year? You don't have to give any specifics away, but... Uh, I've got a few, like, label releases coming up. There are a few collabs coming out. Uh, some songs that I know people are very hyped for. But yeah, I, I won't be very specific, but songs that you guys like, yeah, they'll, they'll awesome. be coming. <laughs> uh, I'll make sure that they're coming. And I'll make sure yeah. that the releases are consistent. I've been pretty good with that this year. Trying to make sure like I'm doing, like, the monthly thing, but I don't want to do too much where people sort of get like sick of it but i don't want to do too little where i'm kind of not, not really putting my name out enough so i'm trying to make sure i'm like consistent with it uh and so far the rest of the year is looking pretty good so excellent looking forward to seeing what, what you're doing this year and in the future i had a question though with you said you obviously you, some of your goals are touring more getting on getting on that and i know you previously mentioned with your diabetes that it was challenging for you to leave with her. How, if once you get your visa, are you able to get medicine in the States or how does yeah, see, how that's that work? The thing. I, I will, but I'll have to pay for it or figure out a way to import it or something like that. I don't know, because in the UK, we get it all free. Our uh, healthcare is completely free, whereas you guys pay for everything. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. And for diabetes, like it's lifesaver, honestly, the best. Yeah, the best thing ever.
I mean, who knows? I, I could make enough money the where it doesn't matter, but I try not to like think about it as like a money thing. I'm not really too fussed. I mean, making like a living off it is always awesome, but the music comes first, always. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really enjoyed having you on. Uh, before we get out of here, last couple of questions. Where can listeners find you and follow along You know your career and the rest of your journey? Yeah, so I'm on basically every platform, uh, even TikTok, although I don't use it. TikTok's so, yeah, a challenging just, one, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So on, on Twitter, it's just Mad Dubs. On SoundCloud, it's just Mad Dubs. Instagram, Mad Dubs Music. Facebook, I don't even know what my Facebook <laughs> is. Um, and then Spotify, Apple Music, of course, is just uh, Mad Dubs. But awesome. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Last final question. If there's one piece of advice you could give yourself when you first picked up a DAW back when you were 10, 11 years old, what advice would you give younger you? Honestly, not to compare. Like something I did a lot and I still do now is I'd listen to like Virtual Riot and then make a song and then play the Virtual Riot song and go like, I'm awful. And then I would like <laughs> not open FL Studio for like a week. So I'd, I'd say to myself, the more time I put in not caring and just the more time I put in, the quicker I will be like these people I'm listening to. And that's sort of where like the, the nine year grind is sort of like gone. But I'd make sure to say just to not like focus on the not so important bits and just focus on building up. The, the same sort of thing that like, goes for like, I guess, putting your name out there and like starting a career in it is like, don't think about the the small things and the pointless things, especially at the start. Just think about just putting the time in and just yeah building the blocks uh that's not a subphotronic reference <laughs> yeah but stacking stacking the blocks just like putting your sound out there really and uh, trying to know people but just honestly it's all about having fun so don't try to like think about the things that ruins the fun and makes it like a job but that's about it to be honest thank you so much man